Hello and welcome to another Q's Views RPG video. Now I've been on somewhat of a hiatus once again, but I am back and this time hope to make a solid effort at uh, keeping the content coming in a more regular basis now. And to do that, we're going to start off by continuing uh, the Monster Book series. And today we have a very special book. We have the Castles and Crusades classic monsters and treasure so while this is not just a monster book in and of itself per se it is primarily a monster book so i felt it was uh it was good to include this incorporate it into this series but either way let's get to the monsters and creatures within this book and uh take a look at some of these now once again i'm not going to go through every creature or monster in the book but rather just touch on a few here and there and uh, kind of have some discussions. You can talk We can talk about maybe some of the monsters you have used or, or haven't, why or why not. Um, maybe particular creatures you like over certain other creatures in this book. Now there is another Creatures and Treasures book for this game and we're going to cover that book as well following this book. So uh, stay tuned for that. Pretty cool introduction to this book, how to use it, all of that fun stuff that's uh, reminiscent of monster books. Monster experience tables based on based on level and whatnot. Some really cool artwork. I will say this, the artwork in this book is, in, is pretty simplistic and it's in black and white. However, for me, it does not detract from the monster book whatsoever. The artwork, in my opinion, is quite good, and it seems to kind of fit the scope of what they're trying to do with this book. I know a lot of people have moved to all these great, uh, you know, color artists, you know, full color pictures and high definition pictures and all that. And I think that's great. And I think this picture right here is kind of reminiscent of that but without the color. But what this takes does what this artwork does in this book, it kind of takes me back to the days of all of the earlier RPG games where uh you know all the artwork in all the books was done in black and white and even though that was the case it was spectacular and it fit the game and it kind of takes me back to those days the early days or for some people even the classic days of uh tabletop role-playing games some very cool monsters outlions the ascomoid the apparition a lot of these creatures we're familiar with already like the atomi and the Arumvarax. Um, but of course, this is their version of these same monsters. And I do like the spin that a lot of them have put on these monsters, such as like the Basilisk the, and the Behemoth, which of course is just a hippopotamus. And this is what I'm talking about in terms of the artwork. Maybe black and white, but this stuff is absolutely gorgeous. They had some really fantastic artists on here working on this great material. And I really like this, how they use the dark to emphasize the light instead of having light emphasize the dark, if that makes any sense. So it's really, it's really great. It really helps the images really stand out in a lot of these pictures. And I'm uh, like the boggle. I really like what they did with the boggle here. Very simplistic drawing, nothing complex about it at all. Um, but it gets the point across of what you would encounter, what you see when you encounter that creature. And it's very instilling. Now you can tell that there's different artists working on different pictures. You can tell that's not all the same artists because of the different styles. There's a, there's a, an artist uses more bolder lines while some uses more thinner lines. Some have interconnecting lines. Some use lines that don't necessarily connect. Then you have some that are a little less intensity than others. Somewhere like these, where it's just mostly just a, a line drawing. Then you have these that are highly shaded. And so uh, those are indeed from different artists. Um, but, uh, and some people would be put off by that. I've seen some people say, well, the art, you can tell the artwork is not all the same. It doesn't, I don't know. I, I think that's, uh, give, that's part of the, um, should I say the charm of these books, in my opinion. Because you do have different artists working on it, working together. And instead of saying, okay, you all need to look, your, all your artwork needs to follow this particular conformity, right? Rather than doing that, 
they uh, let the artist do the thing that they do. And so, in my opinion, it adds more personality to the character and kind of the some of the character or the personality of the artist maybe shine through through the imagery. And I like that. You have the Death Knight here. Very interesting take on the Death Knight, which I really like. Daryls are always cool. We're going to skip ahead just a little bit. Like I said, we're not covering every monster and creature there is in here, but we're going to cover like the Devil Dog, Disenchanters. Dune Wraith. I've never used a Dune Wraith in a campaign. If you have, let me know. Ear Seeker. That sounds crazy. I've never used that in a campaign either, to be honest. Again, just some great imagery. It's perfect for what this book is trying to convey. And I really like that they allowed each individual artist to shine in what they do. The Flump. <laughs> I have used Flumps before. You really want to Throw a party off guard. Use these things. Because no one ever sees a flump coming. No one. <laughs> Alright, let's see here. Some monsters. We've got the Gorgimera. Gorilla Bears. The Gorbells. Which were originally featured in another book I'm not going to mention. But if you know it and can mention it down in the, in the comment section, that would be great. And such a gorgeous picture right here. Just such great artwork. I love it. I love it. I love it. Can't get enough of this stuff. Probably was I'm such a fan of monster books in general. The Lamia, Korids, more classic creatures that have been used all over the place. Were Fox, the Fox Woman. Yeah, the Necrophidius. Always really cool. Ogre Rat. Never used those. If you have, let me know. Peritons are classic. Phantom Stalkers are classic. Phoenixes are classic. The Quickling. I think it's interesting here because like in the very first entry of the Quickling, if you know what book that's from, let me know in the comment section. But uh, their movement rate is 100 feet. But in the original book that they were first shown in, and I'm not going to mention it here. You can tell me in the comment section. Um, it was actually a 96. 96 feet. So they actually give them an extra four feet. In their movement rate, which is, I think, is kind of interesting. It's kind of rounded it up, I guess. <laughs> Here we have the Silky, Scarecrows. Scarecrows are always cool to use because you see them, you know they're there. But they're always, it's a tense situation because you don't know if they're going to attack or not. Is it just a, a regular Scarecrow or is it really something that can attack them? Scale of the Warriors are classic, as classic as it gets, really. Spriggans. I've never used the stun jelly, but have thought about it. The Tarosk. Tarosks are something you never want to mess with, obviously. HD 30, D10 hit dice, 300 HP. Just that alone, just that stat alone is crazy enough. But then they have an AC of 28, which is insane. And then they have all these attacks, doing all this damage. And then they're so resistant. They're resistant and resilient to so many things. Not including their specials. Their feet. Vessel Hydras. Crazy stuff, man. Anybody who's ever encountered a Tarrasque and survived, let me know that in the comment section down below. I don't expect anyone to say they sir, that they beat one straight up in combat. I know there are people that have, and there's theories on how to do it. But I don't know anyone personally who has done it. Almost every party I've... I had two parties try to take one on and they all got wiped out. And then I've had some parties encounter and then just run. But uh, that was it. And that was over the span of what? 40 years that I've been playing these games? <laughs> that's that's it. That's been the bulk of it. They're extremely rare. And thank goodness, right? The Yetis, we have the zombies. Nothing is more classic creature than a zombie. And then we got all these appendixes and tables and... Really cool stuff that uh, that uh, GMs and DMs can use to, uh, you know, collect select monsters and stuff um, at random. Some really great tables, great information, just really good stuff all around. Classic monsters. Monsters abound. They litter the halls of our collective imaginings like so much debris. Wandering monsters, laird beasts. Plane walkers, horrid thoughts that linger upon the edge of adventure. 
classic monsters and treasure unearth a host of them collected from the various sources from the early days of tabletop role-playing classic monsters and treasures is a must-have adding more than 120 monsters to your evening's game of castles and crusades classic monsters and treasure bring them all back from the tarasque to the periton from the mighty dune stalker to the nightshade this book unleashes a whole new wave of mayhem classic treasure classic monsters and treasure is more than just monsters plundering from the depths of history here are a host of them famous and infamous carried by the greatest heroes of antiquity the fruit of the lotus tree lancelot's ring excalibur and tarnhelm and so much more so there you go castles and crusades the classic monsters and treasures book by kim hartsfield um such a great book, such a great addition to any role-playing game setting, whether it be Castle Crusades or a homebrew game or whatever you want to do. I do recommend their other products, and we will be covering a, a lot of them in the coming future. But this is uh, Q saying thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this, and we'll have we have many more yet to come. So we'll see you next time. Have a great day. Take care.